High Adventure. Tonight, Ron Evans takes us on a trip behind the Iron Curtain in his story called The Substitute. Yes, Colonel Helster speaking. He's dead, sir. Uh, control yourself, Simmons. Who are you talking about? Roger Watkins, sir. He's dead. They found him an hour ago. Hanged himself. Watkins hanged himself? Oh, no, not at a time like this. Uh, how? Why? He was being well treated. It's a trouble, sir. He got hold of a couple of sheets and... Well, you can guess. <sighs> Heads are going to roll, Simmons. I can promise you that. Now, what are we going to do? Without Watkins, with nothing to bargain with... Oh, what an unholy mess we're in. The whole deal is set for Sunday. Sorry, sir. It looks like uh, it will have to be called off. We can't let this opportunity to get Gerald Briscoe back from the... Wait, wait. Yes, there could be a way. Yeah. Simmons? Yes, sir. Get yourself back here as quick as you can. Oh, yes. And tell Major Phillips that Watkins' death must be kept a secret. Right. Yes, it could work. By heaven, it's got to work. I can assure you, Miss Pickering, that it is not a good morning at all. I want you to go down to records and bring me a recent photograph of every agent in our employ. And please, act in haste, Miss Pickering. Simon. The goeie oda van Springbok Radio is terug. Onverkrijgbare liekies nou op een CD Met al jou ginstelinge Virginia Lee, Cora Marie, Anton Goosen, Sonja Herold, Cupido en vele meer Herleef Springbok Radio, Afrikaanse treffers Die volgende klassieke advertentie van Springbok Radio's verlede kom met die vergunning van die Springbok Radio bewaringsvereniging van Zuid-Afrika. I don't speak a single word of Russian. You won't need to, my boy. Watkins couldn't, or so he claimed. He was born and bred here in England, but of Russian parentage. I've got a complete dossier on his life history up to when he was arrested last year. Eight years the blighter worked as a controller in MI6 and flagged every darn secret he could lay his hands on. Why me, sir? I mean... Because you look like Watkins, that's why. Or rather enough like him to keep the Russians fooled for a while. You, you, you do realize how important it is that we get Gerald Briscoe back? It's a miracle they're willing to swap him for you. I mean, for Roger Watkins. Yes, a valuable man is Briscoe. Well, I'm expendable. No, 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 no. You mustn't look at it like that, young Tyler. You're good at your job as well. And you'll have an excellent chance to get away if you play your cards with a modicum of skill. You make it sound easy, sir. I have to pretend to be Watkins, allow myself to be handed over to the Russians. Then I have to bluff and bluff for a day or two... And then try and escape back to the West. Correct, Tyler. Look, they'll grill me like a sirloin steak and throw me to the dogs. If they don't do that, I'll spend the rest of my natural in Lubyanka prison. No, no, it's not as bad in Lubyanka as it used to be in the old days. The Russians have liberalized a lot, you know. Why, I was only talking... Thank about... you, thank you, sir. You don't have to do it upon us. Now, 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 Tyler, we mustn't be negative, now, must we? <clears throat> Let me give you the rest of the details. Now... At dawn on Sunday morning, you will be taken to Checkpoint Charlie. That's yeah. the one leading into East Berlin. Right. You will then walk across to their side while Gerald Briscoe walks over to ours. From that point on, what happens is entirely up to your own discretion. I oh, see. yes, 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 yes. Wait. There is one important matter. You must never let the Russians know you are not Watkins. That could be disastrous as well as you could imagine. We would be accused of duplicity, not playing the game and all that. Yes, can't have that said about us now, can we? What? 
When you do make a bunk, make it seem that you, uh, as Watkins, have changed your mind and want to get back to the West. Is that clear? It gets worse by the second. Uh, this afternoon, you'll be taken to Courtly Manor to undergo some special training. Uh, by Saturday, you'll actually be believing you are Roger Watkins. Yes, well, I think that's all I have to say for now. Good luck, Tyler. And I'm looking forward to seeing you back here safe and sound in a week or so. Thank you, sir. Uh, close the door behind you. Uh, close, not slam. Yes, Colonel? Uh, you can send the OK message to Agent Valkyrie. In Sophic code, text as follows. The rat is in the trap. Yes, I was in a trap, all right. But I didn't know the extent of it. I'd always liked the head of my secret service section, Colonel Halstead. And to look at him, you'd never believe he could stoop to double-crossing the Russians, let alone his own agents. He was smooth, affable, quite the father figure. And underneath, as hard as steel nails. Anyway, he was right about one thing. After four days at Courtly Manor, I really was believing I was the convicted spy, Roger Watkins. In addition to studying every aspect of his life and experiences, his social and physical mannerisms, I was shown a dozen different ways to bluff an interrogator should the Russians get nasty. It was just beginning to get light when I started my walk over into the Russian zone of East Berlin. My ploy was to look and behave dazed and bewildered, until I could figure out an escape plan. So the manner in which I walked was rather like that of a drunken man. Ahead of me, I saw a dark figure shuffling towards me. Gerald Briscoe. As he passed, he barely gave me a glance. Slowly, I approached the black and white striped barrier where a group of men awaited me. One of them stepped forward and hugged me. Roger, Roger, at last you are a free man. We are so glad to see you. Thanks, sir. Of course, of course. You do not know me yet. No. I am Colonel Iroshkin, Department I of KGB. And this is Major Vlaminsky, who will escort you to Moscow in a few days. I am pleased to meet you, Mr. Watkins. Hello. And this is Major Bergov, who will attend to your every need while you are here with us in Berlin. Honor to meet you, Mr. Watkins. Hello. No, no doubt you are tired after your ordeal. Major Bergov will take you to an apartment we have uh, put at your disposal, and there you can bath, have a rest, and at midday I will call and have a talk with you. Major... Our brave guest is in your very capable hands. Come, Mr. Watkins. My staff car is parked over here. I followed, trying not to show too much interest in Major Burgoff, which wasn't easy. She was exceptionally good-looking, and a figure that showed up well under her severely cut uniform. I climbed into a long black limousine, which was chauffeured by an army driver. She sat beside me and worked hard at being pleasant. Your work for us has been very much appreciated in Moscow. It was very brave of you to expose yourself to such terrible risks for the sake of Mother Russia. Your parents must have taught you to love the land of their birth, da? Yes. Were they cruel to you when you were caught? Yes. Were you tortured? Yes. Uh, psychologically, not physically. Ah, da, it is their way. But now you are safe and free. You will be amply rewarded for what you have done. You are certain to get decorated as a hero of the Soviet Union, along with the multitude of benefits that go with the award. You appear to be very tired, Mr. Watkins. I am. And a little mixed up. Soon you will be fit and... Uh, how you English call it? <laughs> da. Full of beans. <laughs> you will be well looked after. Nothing but the very best for Mr. Roger Watkins. And then when you are happy, I am sure there will be very many useful things you can tell us. I was given a neat three-roomed apartment on the fourth floor of a block. Although still pretending to be dazed, I took everything in. A guard was posted outside the door and I detected at least two concealed television cameras in the first hour. 
The Major showed me the one bedroom and told me she'd be occupying the other during my stay, which uh, made me wonder to what extent she'd been ordered to uh, minister to my needs. I took a shower, then lay on the bed where I could be seen by one of the cameras. For three hours, I pretended to be asleep. At eleven, Major Burgoff brought in some sandwiches and coffee and told me to prepare for Colonel Erushan's visit. When the Colonel came, he was accompanied by the stern-faced Major Flaminsky. Da, thank you, Major. Very good. Now, uh, please sit here, Mr. Watkins, and make yourself comfortable. You had a good rest? I was restless. Mm, understandable. You will soon settle down in your new life. Major Vlaminsky, may I hand over the proceedings to you? Da. Thank you, Colonel. Tell me, Mr. Watkins, what were you last working on when you were uh, discovered? Look, I can't go into that right now. Why not, may I ask? I'm, I'm all confused. You have arrested. There is nothing more to fear. Look, I, I need a few days more to, to, you know, to reorientate myself. Days, Mr. Watkins. I do not have days to spare. When we fly to Moscow, I must have a complete report on your interrogation. Interrogation? I agree, Major. Interrogation is a rather harsh word. Discussion is the word I think you mean. Uh, of course. D discussion. The Colonel has a greater mastery of the English language than I. Please. You understand, Mr. Watkins, that I cannot go to Moscow empty-handed. I need a full report on you. You'll have me with you. I can report directly. That will not be desirable. I must separate the important facts from the irrelevant. Now, if you'll kindly cooperate. Well, not now. You must. Who says so? I orders. Not long ago, you were saying I was free. What kind of freedom is this? You are free to do as you please as long as you obey. It is simple. Simple for you, perhaps. I think it best if you answer the Major's questions, Mr. Watkins. This is merely a routine debriefing, you understand? All right, all right. There is a lot I can tell you, but not now. I'm not ready. First, I want to have time to collect my thoughts. Ever since they knew I was going to be sent here, they've subjected me to intensive sound and light treatment to damage my memory. They haven't succeeded. Can't you understand what I've been through? You must answer my questions, nevertheless. Wait, wait, Major, wait. Perhaps it is too early. We must give Mr. Watkins some consideration. Tell me, is there anything you need to help your recuperation? After being locked in a six-by-six six cell, I need to let my hair down a wild night out. Uh, I see. This suggestion is preposterous. No, no, not preposterous, Major. Inconvenient. Uh, look, Mr. Watkins, we shall leave you until this time tomorrow. There is plenty to drink, a tape recorder with lots of musical tapes, and I'm sure Major Berghoff will assist you if there is anything else you require. Will that be uh, satisfactory? I suppose so. Beggars can't be choosers. Ah, very well, then. Until tomorrow. Have a nice time. Da, and kindly have your answers ready. The following classic Springbok radio commercial comes to you with the courtesy of the Springbok Radio Preservation Society of South Africa. A fella could go steady with a girl who has ready a cup of Joko tea. Well, do you like me or only the tea, that wonderful Joko tea? Joko is so flavory, cause Joko's the top quality tea. A fella could go steady with a girl who has ready another cup of Joko tea. Enjoy the best of both worlds. Only two hours drive from Johannesburg and Pretoria and half an hour by air. The magnificent Sundown Ranch Hotel and Lion Park, just 10 kilometers from the Pilansburg Game Reserve and Sun City Resort. It offers an exciting escape from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. Reasonable rates, excellent food, friendly service and comfortable air-conditioned rooms. It will ensure a memorable stay. Activities include tennis, squash, horse riding, the lion park and much, much more. Call now to make your reservation on 014-573-1000. That's 014-573-1000 or visit their website at www.restonations.co.za forward slash sundown ranch. 
the Sundown Ranch Hotel and Lion Park, two worlds in one. Soon after Erushan and Vlaminsky had left, there was a positive softening in Major Burgoff's manner. She'd become positively kittenish. She poured me drinks, played music, even moved her hips to the rhythm. After four stiff brandies, I was beginning to see her in a different light. In fact, to be honest, it was only the knowledge that I was being watched by unseen eyes with the medium of the television camera that kept me from making a play for her there and then. After pouring me yet another drink, she went into her bedroom and softly closed the door. When she emerged fifteen minutes later, I had to stifle a gasp. She was Snow White, Bo Peep, Alice in Wonderland and Goldie Horn, all rolled into one. Is that better? Does taking off my uniform make you feel more relaxed, Roger? I can call you Roger, da? Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, please do, uh, Major. Oh, no, 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 not Major, please. My first name is Linia. Yes, Linia. I will now join you for a drink. It would make it more like a, <laughs> like a party. Uh, here, let me get it for you. Da. And then we can both sit over here and get to know each other better. Far, far better. And then later we can dance. Thank you, I'll drink it straight. Why did you glance over into the corner? I, uh, nothing. You know, don't you? Know what? That we are being watched. Is that why you are so, so reserved? It can easily be remedied. Inside here is a switch. This turns off the monitors, the recorder and the microphones. Anything we do now will be totally private. Won't be... Colonel Piang. Oh, no. Colonel Erushin is a gentleman. He will understand. It was clever of you to detect the camera, Roger. I guess there'd be one here, so I looked out for it. Please, sit here beside me and let us forget the outside world until tomorrow. I want you to tell me all about yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I will do likewise. It will help to unfreeze them. <laughs> How do you say? <laughs> You mean melt the ice. <laughs> <laughs> While I told her all I had learned of Roger Watkins' life story, I was now on guard, being careful not to drink too much, whilst giving her the impression I was getting blotto. I noticed that Linya, too, was also pretending to drink more than she actually did. She was dressed in a sheer black cocktail dress that left nothing to a man's imagination. And her ultimate intention was obvious. Or so I thought. In fact, as it turned out, seduction was her penultimate intention. Well, I'm not going into all of that, but a little after ten I proceeded to fall asleep. My ultimate intention was to make an escape from the block of flats. Soon after, Linya appeared to fall asleep. But I wasn't going to take any chances for a while. I judged one o'clock to be the right time to make my move. As it happened, Linya had an earlier deadline. She stirred, sat up, went into her room. A moment later, she returned with an automatic pistol in her hand, a bulbous silencer covering the muzzle. Wake up, Roger. Hey, do you hear me? Wake up! Uh, uh, what's the matter? Uh, I thought... It's you... What are you pointing that gun at me for? One loud noise and I will plant a bullet right between your eyes. Stand up. Oh, what's this all about? You are going to commit suicide. Like hell I am. You have a choice. Kill yourself or suffer two soft-nosed bullets in your stomach. A very painful but certain way to die. And how would you make me kill myself? You will jump headfirst out of the window. Then I will quickly take a capsule which simulates unconsciousness. I will claim you gave it to me in a drink in order to kill yourself. Now, please... Move over towards the window and open it. You're out of your crazy little mind, Linya. Why? Tell me why. Orders. Roger Watkins must die. From Moscow? What does Moscow want me dead for? Not Moscow. London. London? That doesn't make sense. You fool. Do you think MI6 can permit you to continue working for Moscow? Orders came yesterday that you must be eliminated before you can open up. Even at the expense of my own life. What? 
When Major Kleminski was questioning you, I was ready to shoot you then and shoot myself. Now, instead... I can kill you and continue performing my useful function here in Berlin. Look, look, I I just don't understand. It is not necessary for you to do so. Open the window. And if I don't? I have warned you. Two stomach shots and a bullet in my own head. You know, I think you're serious. Deadly serious. Now move. Now look, there's been a mistake, Linya. A terrible mistake. Somebody in London's botched things up. Are you... Really, an agent for MI6? You must know that by now. Colonel Halstead is my immediate superior. Mine too. Do you know who I am? Roger Watkins. Roger Watkins is dead. I'm Paul Tyler, Special Operations. No. No, 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 that is impossible. Just give me a chance to explain. Be quick and it will change nothing. On Tuesday, the real Roger Watkins killed himself and caused a flat. From this point on, my instructions are to escape where and when possible. Can't you see? Somebody else in special ops doesn't know I'm a substitute and has given the order for Watkins to be killed. My order came directly from Colonel Halstead. Only he and his private secretary know my code name, Valkyrie. For some reason only known to the Colonel, he wants your death. <sighs> the rat. Yes, I'm beginning to see the whole picture now. If and when my cover is blown, the Russians will know I'm not Watkins, and that will put his department up Queer Street. Therefore, if I'm dead, I can't talk, can I? Watkins will have died here in Berlin, so he won't have to explain off the body lying in a London mortuary. What are you going to do now? It will not be easy to escape. I'm determined to get home, even if it's just for the pleasure of throwing Colonel Halstead's funeral plans awry. Take that pill you told me about. It'll give you a good excuse when you have to explain my disappearance. No, no, the truth will come out and I will be blamed. I have a better idea, if you will let me help you escape. All right. For a long time, I've wondered what I would do if it were known I was a spy for the West. Tell me. You will find out soon. First, we must dispose of the guard outside the door. I, too, will join you in your escape. I won't argue. Stay behind the door. I will call in the guard and you will knock him out. Stay there and hit him hard. Please, please come and help me. The man is sick. No, Major. Where is she? Inside the bedroom. Come quickly. Ah. (laughs) Very good, Roger. Now you can call me Paul. I will get you to it. Quickly change clothes for the guard and I will tie him securely. All we need is an hour's start. And all we do is walk out? I will put on my uniform. Nobody will address you. They will think you are my driver. What then? How do we cross the Berlin Wall? Wait and see. We will succeed or die in the attempt. Soon after, we casually walked out of the apartment, went down in the lift, and from there out into the street. The three people we passed never cast a second glance... We walked for some ten minutes through dark, deserted streets. At the entrance to a high-fenced, guarded enclosure, Linya Burkov stopped and spoke to a sentry on the gate. He smartly saluted and let us pass. Inside, all around us stood military vehicles. It is all right. We are out of sight of the sentries now. Very neatly done. So, we're going to pinch a lorry, huh? A lorry? How far will we get in a lorry? It can't fly over the Berlin Wall. What then? Can you drive a tank? A tank? Da, a tank. Don't no matter. I can. It can't go over the wall. It can go through it. If you want to help, then this is what to do. Make sure the water hog is never, never you. Just make sure the water hog is never, never you. The following classic Springbok radio commercial comes to you with the courtesy of the Springbok Radio Preservation Society of South Africa. Blossom. 
There's a lot of goodness and quality in Blossom. Always make sure you have enough in the house. Tis the margarine that starts with B. With vegetable oil so pure. With vitamins and more. It's Blossom the word for goodness and quality. Close the hatch, Roger. Okay. And the name's Paul. Look, if we're going to crash the wall in this thing, we'll have to watch out for mines. Oh, mines? The kind of mines and booby traps we meet before reaching the wall won't so much as cause a dent in our armor plate. Good grief. Look, you man the periscope and guide me. Okay. Because I must close the forward hatch. The buttons, they will adjust height and angle. Uh -huh. There, you have the idea. Yeah, I can see so clearly it might just as well be daylight outside. Uh, there are many secrets buried inside the monster. MI6 will be very pleased when it is handed over to them for study. Now, I will start the engine. Crikey, that's going to wake up the whole of Berlin. Well, at the sentries. What can they do? It is usual to wait five minutes before moving off, but I will go slowly at first. How far to the wall? Only 500 meters. You're heading straight for the fence. Ah, that is my intention. We will go through everything as though it does not exist. Oh, 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 dust. We went over a mine. And another. The controls are responding well, so I've got maximum speed. I can see the wall. It's being floodlit. Searchlight. Yes, I can see men running. Oh, nothing to fear. They have no anti-tank missiles. Tell me when we are 50 meters from the wall. Check the range finder. Why? What difference does it make? <laughs> I have thought about these moments many times, and I've always promised that when I crash the wall, I would do so with grace and dignity. <laughs> Just like a woman. We're coming up to it. We're closing. The men are running out of our path. This is it, Lydia. huge metal monster sailed majestically right through the wall with barely a pause. Linya continued driving for a good half kilometer along West Berlin streets before stopping. We were safe, and a brand new Russian tank better off. Well, the only time I saw my precious Colonel Halstead after that was when I handed him my resignation and flung his telephone through the window to show him I meant it. Linya? Well, her last name is Tyler now. Well, after the experiences we shared together that night, it was the only possible result. High Adventure is produced by Henry Diffenthal.